Hey guys, we'll give a few minutes for people to get on here. Good morning. I know some of you guys, it's um, already noon and some of you guys on the West Coast, it might be a little early for you. So I thought I'd wait like an hour since um, somebody had commented that 11 was a little early. So I thought I'd wait a little hour um, for you guys. So today I really prayed about like what to talk about. I feel like um, this is a subject that really needs a lot of attention before your trainings, before, you know, all the things that you can do in Cincy. This is something that is so important. And I sat down this morning, I did my devotion, and I wrote down all these notes. So I'm going to be like all over the place, but hopefully you can follow me because I'm going to ask you guys to do some activities and be interactive with me. Okay. Hi. Well, first of all, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Shannon Grant. I am actually your Upline Superstar Director, and I am so excited to be here. So excited to be here. So, I wanted to um, <clears throat> tell you whenever Melanie was talking to me about the subjects that she was going to do in this Hustle to Director, and she told me about belief, I was like, yeah, that is, that's mine. That's mine. They need to know how important it is. So, I'm not going to go into my story of why I joined, but I will tell you that I have been here now for, I joined in 2009. So, we're in 22. So, I'll be going on 13 years in March with this company. I started whenever we had one catalog, testers that were like this big, which I have in my office if anyone wants to see them. And that's all we had. We didn't have the limited time offers. We didn't have a partnership with Disney. We didn't have the cleaning stuff and the laundry stuff and the pet stuff and the kid stuff and all the things that we have now. Right now, anyone, my five-year-old could sell Scentsy, seriously. Back then, we had the catalog. And if you got tired of what the catalog gave you, then you had to come be creative and find another way for people to want Scentsy. So, um, okay, maybe at the end, if you remind me, I will show them to you. I have them in my office. Okay, so, hey, Melanie, let's talk about belief. I'm going to tell you what, I am a really good person to talk about belief with you. When I joined 13 years ago, my belief was like that big, like in myself. I had been through, my first marriage was very abusive, emotionally abusive, uh, didn't believe in myself. I did not like the person in the mirror at all. The only time I would look in the mirror was really whenever I'd put my makeup on or make sure my hair looked okay. I couldn't stand looking into my eyes, looking into the soul that was looking in that mirror because I was so miserable. I was so broken and I was in a place of despair and I didn't know it. I was still the chippy, chipper, happy person when you were around me. But in the velvet prison that I was in, I was miserable. So there is a cue right there for you to check on your happy friends, okay? Check on your happy friends. That's very important. Um, so like I said, I got notes. So I'm going to be going back and forth, okay? Uh, so let me just tell you a little bit about me. I, gosh, I don't even know. I have four kids. I have a daughter that's 24. I have a son that's 16, another son that's 15, and a daughter that's 13, my kids grew up in Scentsy. My kids grew up um, smelling the scent, stacking the testers, learning their alphabet. They grew up in Scentsy. I had a degree as a veterinarian um, technician and I was in school to, for veterinarian science whenever I went through my divorce. And basically what happened is he quit paying for vet school and told me that if I ever became a vet, that would probably leave him. So he was going to go ahead and jerk that rug out from under my feet as well as everything else. So my dreams of becoming a vet um, didn't happen. And it really, really took me to a place of despair because that's all I wanted in life. But what I didn't know was my heart's desires, which is what I'm going to talk to you about today. So I was in that relationship. Years and years went by. Finally, I left him, right? Yay, I left him. I remarried a guy that I had met when I was... 15 years old, we ran back into each other years and years later. Um, he was going through a divorce. I was going through a divorce. And I had Peyton, who was my um, only child at the time. We had three children together. 
And I thought that having kids and more kids would fill this void inside of me. That it would be like, oh, well, kids are going to be the answer. No, it did not. I thought by buying a home and painting all the rooms a certain color and cooking all the recipes and being the best mom I could be for my kids and staying home with them and just being so present would heal the void inside my heart. It didn't. So when my daughter was born, nine months later is when Cincy came into my life. Now listen to me and listen to me good. This is how I joined Cincy. I walked into my sister's home who lives three hours away and her house smelled amazing. That scent made me feel incredible. It gave me hope. It reminded me of the happiest time in my life. The scent was called Flirtatious. And the other scent upstairs was called Mediterranean Spa. And I looked at my sister and I said, hey, where do I get this from? Because my sister and I had a thing where we would um, go to like Bath and Body Works and tell each other what scents we were gonna buy or the Glade, I know I said Glade, right? or the Glade plugins and tell each other what we had in our, our homes because I was in Ohio. I was married to a very successful man, but I was in a velvet prison because the things that were happening behind the doors were not good. Didn't want my family to know, didn't want anyone to know. So scent is what really made me happy. My sister would call me and tell me all these things. So when I walked into her house and her house smelled really, really good, I'm like, where'd you get this from? She's like, my neighbor next door sells it, blah, blah, blah. That's all I had to hear. My neighbor next door sells it. What she didn't know is I'd already tried Mary Kay years before and fell flat on my face. My sponsor was very hard on me. She told me I had to buy all this inventory. She would pressure me. So it got to the point of where when I knew she was coming around, I'd turn off all the lights and hide under the windows so she couldn't even see in my house that anybody was home because I could not stand it, but I didn't have enough guts to tell her I wasn't happy. Just like I didn't have enough guts to tell my ex-husband that I wasn't happy, right? Until I finally left. Anyway, I know this is a lot, but it's gonna get somewhere, I promise. So anyway, um, I asked Kendall, you know, where did you get the scent? And she said, my neighbor um, sells it. So I ran next door to her neighbor. I bought about $150 worth of stuff. I threw it in my car, because back then, um, if someone did have it, that would be fantastic because we were ordering it, everybody was ordering it online. I came home, I put it in my house, and my house smelled amazing. I felt amazing. It made me really, really happy. You guys gotta remember this. I'm gonna come back to this at the very end. It made me really happy. I joined because of how it made me feel. And when I felt good, my family felt good. My kids felt good. It was good. Okay, that's all I can say. My car smelled good because we had scent circles. We did have scent circles, and back then we called them car candles. Anyway, I'm in Cincy, right? And all of a sudden, I start finding this confidence I never knew because I would share with people what my house smelled like. When they would come over, they'd be like, oh my gosh, your house smells so good. What is it? I'd be like, oh, it's the Cincy stuff that I got into. People would take it home. They would smell it. I would see orders online, people would take it home, they would smell it, they would call me and say, hey, I wanna join your team. I'd be like, no, 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 you don't wanna join my team, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm telling you guys, my belief in myself, my confidence was like that, all right? I remember the day that I went to join, I remember praying to the Lord, I don't know why I'm doing this, I just want my house to smell good, I just wanna feel good, I just wanna heal. If you can use this to make that happen, I'm yours. Use me as a vessel that you please. I remember saying that. And next thing you knew, people started coming. I went to the church and I put a nightlight in the pastor's office and in his wife's office and people started coming to the church. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Where did you get it? And they'd be like, Shannon. So the more that people wanted to buy from me, the more that they wanted to join me, the more my confidence was starting to go up because I thought, I don't deserve success. The people who already have success, they've already taken it all, right? There's probably already all these people selling it anyway. No one's gonna buy from me. I'm not that pretty. I'm not the person that 
needs to represent this stuff because my ex-husband told me all the time that I stuttered and that I was not pretty and no one would ever have me if I ever left him. I had all these thoughts in my head, all these thoughts in my head that was keeping me from wanting to show up in this business. And I remember one day, the guy that I'm married to now, who got on my nerves like crazy back then because he's Mr. Positivity. You, do you know those kind of people? The people that are always happy, the people that are always dreaming, the people that you just want to kind of turn the volume down a little bit? Well, I've become one of those. But back then, when I didn't believe in myself, I didn't want to be around those kind of people. The self-help books, I wanted to tear them all up in Barnes & Noble. I didn't believe in any of that mess because I was so stuck in my crap that I couldn't see beyond it. So one day, my husband took me to the airport and he has a pilot's license and he's looking at all these planes. And I'm like, come on, let's go, let's go. And he's like, no, I'm looking for planes. And I remember I was like really irritated. I was starting to grow in Cincy. I think I had about a team of nine or 10 at the time. And I looked at him, I was like, Steve, why do we keep looking at planes when we're never gonna have one? And he just looked at me and he's like, Shannon, I don't know what to think. He's like, I don't know whether to be mad or feel sad for you. He was like, either you don't know how to dream or either somebody squished your dreams, honey, and we need to talk. And that was my husband telling me this because I was the girl that did not like to go window shopping because I didn't want to be reminded of the things I would never have. I was a girl that didn't want to go out to the parade of homes because I didn't want to be reminded of the homes I'd never have. I didn't want to hang out with the cool people because I didn't want to see their purses and see their cars and because I was reminded of the things I'd never have. It was bad. It was really, really bad. I'm so thankful he married me. But Cincy is what changed my life because when you join Cincy, you aren't just joining Cincy for the products and, and all those things. It is a personal um, development plan with a comp plan attached that over the years as you do things, you learn so much about yourself, right? So you kind of see where I was going with this. So we got home that night and I asked myself, why do I believe I don't be that I don't deserve success? Why don't I believe I can be like Becca, that I can be like Angie, that I can be like Jen? Why don't I believe those things? What happened to me? And that is when I went on my journey of belief that I'm getting ready to take you on. So are you ready? Because we get your pens and pencils because we're going to work. Because I think I'm going to share some things with you today about self-discovery that maybe you've never thought of before. And hopefully when you get off, it will point you in a direction of being able to um, expand your circle, expand your knowledge, and really be able to look for the things you need to attract in your life, okay? All right, so I know that was kind of long, and that's not even my Cincy story, but that is what happened. My husband came to me one day, and he's like, Shannon, I don't get it. I don't get it. Why do you work so hard in Cincy? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? I'm just curious, you know, what has given you this drive? You're not the person that I married. And I said, because no one can tell me that I can't do it anymore. No one can tell me that I don't deserve it anymore. No one can tell me that I'm not going to be anything without somebody else. Not only are they not telling me that, I don't believe it anymore. Belief, right? So the first thing that would kill your belief is negative talk. Negative talk to yourself. How many of you guys do that? How many of you guys say, oh my gosh, I just suck. Oh, they're never going to join my team. They're not going to join my team because I didn't win that trip. They're not going to join my team because I don't have a director's title yet. They're not going to join my team. They're not going to buy from me. How many of you guys do that? How many of you tell yourself and, and like body shame yourself in the morning? How many of you do that? So I want you to think about really quickly, I want you to think of some of the negative things that you say to yourself and I want you to write them down and I want you to comment below. Tell me some of the things you say. We all do it. What are some of the things? And I'm gonna wait for a second while you um, write these down because it's very, very important. You know, what about, you know, I don't have the money. I, I can't go and do that. I'll never have the money to do that. I don't deserve that. 
No one will understand my childhood, right? What it, I don't even know where to start. Every time I start something, I never finish it anyway. So why even try? Last time I did that, I failed miserably. My customers hate me. I mean, I'm telling you things that we have told ourselves. I've been in this business now for almost 13 years and I've wanted to quit at least a thousand times. I'm telling you. Um, I want you to think about the negative things you say to yourself about your business and I want you to think about the negative things you say to yourself about you. About you. Because I did not want to be that person. Um, I didn't want to look at the person in the mirror. I'm telling you guys. I hated her. I absolutely hated her. I felt like I had disappointed her. I felt like she deserved so much more. I felt like she was waiting for an answer that I couldn't give her because I wouldn't show up on the other side of the mirror. Exactly, exactly. You tell yourself you don't deserve things. You tell yourself you're fat. You tell yourself you're ugly. You tell yourself you're stupid. You tell yourself you're not gonna be able to do the things that they did. You tell yourself all these things, right? Okay, so now I want you to write down three people in your life that you care deeply for, okay? And I want you to also think about a new recruit who just joins. Now, would you say the things that you say to yourself to the people that you love in your family? Would you say to your new recruit that there's no point in following up with that person, they're not gonna order from you anyway? Would you say that? Would you say, you know what? It's saturated. No one's going to buy from you. You might as not even do it. Would you say it? Would you tell your kids, you're not good enough. What are you doing? You're not good. At, why, why did you even get out of bed this morning? Really? Would you do that? No, you would not. So why do we do it to ourselves? Why do we have this negative self-talk? Now, if you're a mom and a dad on here, I want you to give me some hearts. Raise your hand. Let me know. Because this one's going to be a good one. You ready? I'm a mom of four, just like I told you. If somebody walked in my house and talked to my kids the way that I talk to myself sometimes, the things that we just wrote down, if they came in your house and told your son or your daughter they weren't enough, that they weren't fast enough. They'll never be that way. They're too fat. They're too stupid. They're not going to get in the honors class because they just don't get it. If they started talking to your kid that way, that mama bear would come out in you real quick, wouldn't it? You'd be like, Rawr! like, uh-uh, no way. Let me tell you about North Carolina. We carry guns. So no one would talk to my children that way, right? Why do we talk to ourselves that way? Why don't we have the mama bear jump out of ourselves and say, hey, stop. Stop talking to yourself that way. I need you to love yourself. So the first thing about your belief and changing your belief is that negative talk that you give yourself. All right? The second thing, you got to stop apologizing. You have to stop apologizing. Have you ever been around somebody and they're like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Or they'll just like accidentally you know, walk in front of you, not even touch you and be like, oh, I'm sorry. Or they'll come near you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you what, someone who says I'm sorry all the time used to drive me insane because I was that person. It was like I was sorry for my existence. I'm sorry that I'm taking up this breath of space. I'm sorry that God put me on this earth because I'm nothing and I don't deserve anything. That is how I felt about myself. Because I heard that for so many years that I started believing it myself. And when you start telling yourself that story, you are telling yourself a red light story that will just spiral you down to where you won't even get out of the bed in the morning. I'm telling you, it's not fun. And a lot of you guys, depression is not fun, right? It's not. But I'm telling you some things that will help you be able to help you with your belief, okay? So stop apologizing. Because the people that apologize all the time, it really shows their insecurity. It really shows that they don't believe in themselves. 
Stop apologizing. The next thing is say thank you. When someone tells you something and gives you a compliment, say thank you and it means a lot to you. Say thank you and you brightened my day. Say thank you and give them a compliment back. Don't just stop it, thank you, say thank you. You know why? It opens up the world for gratitude. It opens up the world to let people see your confidence about you. My husband taught me this trick. He used to come in all the time, and you gotta remember, I was from a really bad marriage, really bad. Every time that my husband now would do something that reminded me of my ex, it could be just the dumbest thing. It could be a mannerism, it could be anything, but one day, I said something and he went, well, what'd you say? I couldn't understand you. And I said, what are you talking about? Are you saying that I stutter? And he's like, whoa, what are you talking about? Because it triggered me, right? So I was always ready to fight. One day he came in and he told me something. Every day he would come in and he would say, hey, beautiful. Hey, I love you. You were so special to me. You look beautiful today. And I would look like crap and I would never receive it. I'd always be like, stop saying that. You're just saying that. You're just saying that because you're my husband. Yeah, I love you too. One day he came to me. He said, Shannon, I love you so much, but I give you these compliments and you never receive them. And one day I'm going to stop giving them to you because this is important for the person who compliments you to feel that they receive them. And when he said that, it just opened up my eyes to the love that I'd been missing, to the guard that I had up and never felt it because I was ready to fight. I was ready to be like, uh-uh, you can't love me. I'm unlovable. I'm not worthy of love. I'm lucky to be with you, dude. You have no idea how lucky I am. You're not lucky to be with me. You could have anybody. I was thinking all these things. So whenever you get a compliment, you need to make sure that person receives that thank you and understands they made your day, right? Because it's hard. And I understood for the years that he always told me all these things and I would just like blow them away or blow them away, blow them off. How hurtful that was to him because here he was trying to shine a light into my darkness. Okay. Okay. So the next thing is comparison. Comparison will steal your joy. If you're on Facebook and you're looking at that girl or that guy's stuff and it gives you that kind of ugh, kind of feeling, it's a toxic feeling and you're comparing yourself, it will steal your joy. First thing you need to do is stop following them and get the toxic people out of your life, okay? Comparison is not something I believe that God ever intended for us to do to make ourselves feel worse. I feel like it was given to us to be able to measure our worth. And let me explain that. How many of us get jealous? Me. I get jealous all the time. And I'm going to tell you another little story. Don't you love my little stories that I have? So one reason I wanted to be a vet is because I wanted horses. I wanted to be a large animal vet. I wanted to have my own practice. And I wanted to work on horses and then maybe every now and then do small animals as well. I had it all figured out. I'd gone through all of the classes my best friend at the time who ended up really sleeping with my ex-husband, but that's sidebar. Um, but her family had a vet practice that I was actually going to be part of. I mean, everything was set up. And then I was going to break off and make my own practice, have large horses, all the things, right? These were Shannon's dreams. Well, anyway, here's what happened. Rug got pulled out from underneath me did not get to go and do the things I wanted to do, came here, single mom with the child, three years old, lived in an apartment with a mattress on the floor and a cardboard table, I worked a bunch of temp jobs, became a chemist because it was my double major, and I struggled, and I cried myself to sleep every night, and I held my baby girl as tight as I could because that was the one thing that God gave me that was good out of that marriage, okay? So listen to me. I would see other homes and I would be so jealous. I would pull up to other people's houses to visit for playgroup if it was a weekend. And Peyton would always say to me, mommy, are we gonna live here? Mommy, is this gonna be our new home? Because I took her from a beautiful home in Ohio, beautiful, with an awesome place set, to an apartment 
with a mattress on the floor and a cardboard table. And I got my um, plates from Dollar Tree because my ex, when I left him, you ever seen Sleeping with the Enemy? He cut me off at the knees. And I didn't know how I was going to get by. It was God's grace that I actually got by. That's a whole other story. But I'm telling you, it was amazing. So I would go to people's houses. And I would be so jealous. So jealous. I couldn't stand it. I almost couldn't be in their house so long because I couldn't stand the happiness and the, and the things that they had that I never thought I'd have again. And the only way I felt like I'd ever have it was if I went back to that situation. Right? So anyway, someone believed in me. They believed in me, and this is a side note, but I did an interview at a pharmaceutical company. Had no experience whatsoever at all. All I did was veterinarian science, and I blew every interview, every single one of them. It was so bad. Went through three different ones, and they were all like, well, you don't have the experience. Well, you don't have the experience. Finally, I meet with the president. It's later in the day, and he tells me, thank you for coming in. You know, I'm just not the right fit. And I remember looking at him, and I said, how am I ever going to fit anywhere if no one gives me experience? How am, how am I ever going to learn if no one will believe in me? How will that happen to me? And he goes, honey, I don't know, but I wish you luck. Right? I was so desperate. What he didn't know is I had a 9 o'clock deadline that night. My ex told me that if I didn't have a job within six months of me leaving him, I had to go back to him because I will have fallen on my face. About 8.45 that night, I got a phone call. It was the president of the company. He's like, Shannon, this is Phil. I'm calling you for two reasons. One, you really opened my eyes today. Two, I don't know why, but I'm going to hire you because you said you need somebody to believe in you. And I, I think you don't even know me. But for some reason, I'm going to believe in you. And I'm going to offer you this position. And I couldn't believe it. It was like the skies had opened for me. I could not believe it. Somebody believed in me. I couldn't believe it. So I called Max, told him to turn his butt around, go back to Ohio. I won't go on back. And I never did. Somebody believed in me. You have to believe in people under you. You have to believe in that teammate who isn't exactly hitting that 200 because you have no idea what they're struggling with. You hear all these trainings. If they're not doing 500 and they're not doing 2,000, then they're not going to be in my program. Well, Whatever. What about the people that are real? What about the people who are struggling? What about the people who hide behind that happy face that you don't care about because they're not hitting those numbers? As a leader, you have to have a servant's heart. You have to believe in your people. When they believe in themselves, they're going to be on fire. But sometimes it takes one person believing in them. So that was like how I started to survive out of my divorce. So when I joined Sensi. Same thing happened. I asked all my friends if they would buy Scentsy. Everyone said no. I asked doctors and lawyers and nurses and teachers. Everyone said no. And when I say everyone, it was like zero. I'm dead serious. Partly, I didn't believe in what I was talking about. I was just kind of like, eh, I got this thing here called Scentsy. You want to try it? Okay, no, bye. I didn't even do the whole like, well, if they don't want to join, then ask them about buying. If they don't want to buy, then ask them if they want to host a party and get it free, right? Instead, I was like, okay, no buy, right? Okay, so what happened with me was I accidentally went, and I'm going all over the place. I'm, not, I'm off my notes, but just bear with me because I don't know how much time she's given me, but I can talk forever. We're just going to keep going. Anyway, so I went to the hospital to go and see a friend and I dropped my catalog and guys listen to me catalogs were expensive and they still are expensive but I did not want to lose a catalog so I dropped one catalog could not find it anywhere looked everywhere for it dropped it somewhere in the hospital all these people had told me no so I was just going to show my friend the catalog to hear another no I'm sure well my husband had told me that he was from here right so in order for me to really grow. In order for me to go outside my comfort zone, in order for me to find Shannon, I needed to do things I'd never done before. And you hear the saying all the time, if you want the life that 99% of the people won't, you got to do what 99% of the people won't do, right? That's what you got to do. So I remember it like yesterday, my husband said to me, Jesus is running Um, can you guys hear me still? Make sure. 
I'm not doing anything crazy because sometimes my phone acts crazy. Anyway, my husband said to me, don't ask my friends and don't ask my family because I know that when you tried Mary Kay and you even tried another one that you didn't, you know, work out, nail no sound. I figured that would happen. Is it working or no? Is it working? Do I have sound or no? Okay. So am I good to keep going? All right, cool. It just let me know that it was running low on its battery. All right, perfect. So anyway, he told me, don't talk to my friends, don't talk to my family. You need to go outside your comfort zone. And I was scared to death because I didn't know anybody. The thing is, the more strangers that I talked to and the more people that said yes, that is what got me my confidence up. So going back to the hospital, this lady calls me. She tells me that she found my catalog and she's interested in buying some Scentsy. Don't even know her, guys. It's my Gladys story, and I'll YouTube it later because you guys can see it. Um, this lady changed my life. She didn't know me from Adam. I'm telling you, it was incredible. So I called her back, and I said to her, um, great, I've got all these testers, and I can bring them to you, and you can smell them. So I did that, and when I went there, she lived in the worst part of town there was. I had four kids. I told my husband, I'm going to this lady's house. This is where she lives. If I don't call you back, then you know something's wrong. Now, that sounds crazy, right? But what happened was when I got the phone with her the first time, I told her I couldn't go see her because when she told me where she lived, I got scared. So I told her I couldn't see her. I had some plans or my car was messed up. I could not stop thinking about that lie I told her. It was like God was telling me, no, you are not going to lie to her. You're going to pick up the phone. You're going to call her back. So I called her back and I told her I'd lied to her, that I was scared to go where she was. And she told me I was covered in blood. In, the, in, the, in Jesus' blood, that I needed to come. So that's why I called my husband and told him to go. Anyway, I go there, I leave her the scents, leave her the books. She lives in a really bad area. And she's supposed to call me back. She didn't call me back. So about a month, two months go by, she still hasn't called me. And I'm thinking, well, there goes my scentsy business. You know, I trusted somebody. That's what happened. She can't trust anybody either, right? Stories I told myself. Well, she called me right about the two and a half mark month told me to come over that she had an order for me. And I'm thinking, this better be a good order. She's had my stuff two and a half months. Guys, I go in there and she has this manila envelope and she dumps it full of all these order forms and these papers because I didn't give her enough order forms. And it was around, I can't remember, but I think it was $2,500 worth of orders. Each order form had one name on it, the person's first name. And I was like, oh my gosh, do you know how much you've earned in free? Do you know how much you'll make if you join? You need to join me. I mean, I'm just like, can't believe it. And she looked at me and she said to me, this is not for me. This is for you. This is for you to believe in yourself. You don't believe in yourself. And I feel like this is the vehicle that God's given you to help you heal. She didn't know me. She didn't know me. She didn't know that I was broken. She didn't know that I was from another um, broken marriage. She had no idea. She believed in me. She became one of my best friends. She helped me in my business. She helped me nanny the kids. She was amazing. She was an older lady. She was incredible. But she believed in me. So that is how important belief is, guys. When you believe in that one person and you tell them they can do it when they don't believe that they can. Right? So going back to the jealousy thing that I was talking about because I got off on a tangent. Jealousy is your body's way of trying to get your attention of what your heart desires. When I joined Scentsy and people did start booking parties, because back then I did like 15, 16 parties a month. I love doing home parties because the more I got around people and the more that I saw I was kind of this cool person to be around, I liked being around people. It fed my energy. It fed my soul knowing I was making a difference, not only with our products, but with me showing up, with me waking up that day to go meet them. It made the biggest difference in the world. So I remember I would go to these people's houses and it was my sanity outside of insanity because I stayed home all day with three kids that were like a year and a half apart. So it was my sanity outside of that to go to these parties. And I would drive up to these houses. There was like a good six months where there were every house that I did a party for, they all had horses. And every time I'd drive up, I'd stop in their driveway and I would get so mad. Why do I have to do another party at a farm? Why, God, are you reminding me of the things that I walked away from? I wanted horses. And I know it sounds crazy. Some of you guys have horses and that's fantastic. But this is my dream, right? 
So whatever your dream is, it's real, it's yours. This was mine. I wanted horses. I wanted this. This was a reminder of how bad I sucked. This was a reminder of how I left something I could have had. This was a reminder of something I would never have, ever. That's what I thought. So I would go to these parties and see these beautiful horses. Then my first director that signed up under me had a huge horse farm. And I was sick of seeing horses. I was sick of meeting these people that had my dream of having horses. And I was so angry. I didn't understand why was God bringing this to my attention again. The jealousy, I was turning green every time. I don't even know how I did the parties because I couldn't stop thinking about this was supposed to be me, right? How many times have you seen someone else live the life that you wanted? How many times have you let those dreams inside you just die and you're suffocating because you're reminded all the time of the things you wanted you never got? That's what I thought was happening to me. But I learned how to take jealousy and use it as a tool instead of saying jealous and all salty and bitter. I started to realize that my body and my soul and my heart's desires were trying to say, hey, hey, I need your attention here. The reason you're feeling this way is because you still want it, you dummy. You still want it. You can do this. This is your heart's desire. So I want you to think about for a second, exactly. I want you to think about all the people you're jealous of, right? Think of all the people you're jealous of. And I want you to write them down. And then I want you to think about, instead of being like, ugh, she was just born in money. Or, ugh, well, she's got that thousands of people underneath her. No wonder she has that. Or, oh, she can afford that because blah, 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 right? Instead of thinking that way, because we all think that way. I know we do. I know I'm not the only one, right? I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> anyway, instead of thinking that way, think about what inspires you about that person. What inspires you? What is your heart trying to say to you when you see the house in the mountains? When you see that mama staying home and hiding her elf all over the house, but yet you're at a job that you're being micromanaged. That, oh, you're upset because your friend's staying home with her kids and you can't be there for your kids. So you get all salty, right? Instead, you need to pay attention to what your heart's trying to tell you. It's trying to tell you, hey, this is what you want. Let's go. Let's go do this. Come on. We can do this. We can do this. So you need to be able to turn your jealousy into an opportunity to listen to what it is that you desire in your life. Another thing is you have to stop procrastinating. You have to finish what you start. A lot of times when we don't finish what we start, we're reminded all the time, of, well, I wouldn't have got it done anyway. Well, you know what? I didn't get that Happy Meal out, so it doesn't matter because they wouldn't have bought from me anyway. Let me just tell you something. Procrastination usually comes from some form of perfection. I'm not a perfectionist. At least I didn't think I was. But there was a time in my life where, during my Cincy journey, where I would see everybody's Happy Meal. And I would see them send out these incredible things to their, their customers. And I couldn't afford that, right? I, I couldn't afford to do that. So therefore, I didn't do it. I didn't do it at all. If it didn't look the way I wanted it to look, then I didn't do it at all. And I would find myself getting further and further behind with my team mail and with my happy mail because the perfect picture that I had in my head of what I wanted to send my customers, I couldn't do. So I stayed stuck and procrastinated all the time. One day, one person said to me, your customers aren't friends with them, Shannon. They're not even going to know that they didn't get that. I was like, you know what? You're right. You're right. People just need to feel appreciated. They need to feel valued. They need to not be forgotten. If you can meet those three criteria right there, you're gonna have teammates that wanna join you, you're gonna have customers that are loyal and will give you referrals, and you're gonna have people who will host unique shopping links and parties for you. Doesn't matter what you give them. You can give them a written thank you note with a coupon that you happen to print off yourself. You can send them a voice text and just tell them how much their order meant to you. They just want to hear from you. Then you can budget as you grow in your business and maybe you can make that perfection happy mail, 
happen. But until then, stop being stuck because you have it in your mind the way it's supposed to be and it ain't happening. That's what happens so many times. That's why people get stuck and they never finish things because it's not looking like the way that they wanted it to look and they think they're never going to get it anyway. So they stop, right? So that's something that you need to do too is you need to stop procrastinating. So I've been reading this book, and if you guys um, love self-motivational books, um, Mill just wrote a new one. I love her. love her dearly. And um, it's called High Five Habit. And when I was reading it, I'm glad I'm reading it where I am now. Because if I would have read it way back then, I probably would have beat myself up a lot. Because, oh my gosh, I just can't believe how far I am behind. But I'm glad I'm reading it where I am now because I can relate, Right? When things from my past used to come back and, and haunt me, where your dreams will start haunting you, if you don't go after them, it would pull me down. So I learned how to actually name that person. So that person that was stuck in that marriage, that was abused and all these things, and the things happened to her daughter, she has a name. And I call her Anna. I call her Anna. So anytime that those memories come to me, and try to remind me that I'm not enough, I'll never be enough, that I don't matter, that I'm not a good leader, that I'm not a good consultant. I'll say, shut up, Anna. Shut up. Because when you name the feelings and the negative talk and you give it a personality of someone that's come in to talk to your kids in the hallway, the way, or in your house, the way you would never allow it, you start to tell them, to go back and sit down and watch you. Watch me. I will do that. I am going to do that. You can't tell me that anymore. You start telling yourself that. So in this book of High Five Habit, she talks about people who don't like to look themselves in the mirror anymore. And I'm like, oh, that was me. That was totally me. So she says, it's really good. And you guys need to do it. And I hope you go and buy the book. And if you don't buy the book, you know, just look this up. But she said, a lot of times we'll walk in the bathroom, we'll look in the mirror, we'll see ourselves, whatever. We remind ourselves about the day. Oh, I got to go pick up the kids. Oh, I got to go deliver this to the customers. Oh, I got to do this. And then when you don't get those things done, you beat yourself up. And then it's like a groundhog day. Next morning, you're like, oh, I didn't do it yesterday. I got to do it today. I got to do this. And you're always like, oh, I got to do this, right? Instead of I get to do this, right? I get to do this today. I get to design my life to where a business isn't telling me when and where to be, that I can be where I want to be right? So she talks about this person in the mirror. And then she talks about like with the pandemic and everything that happened, because a lot of times whenever um, we used to do those in-person events and things like that, people would come up and they would high five you. Woo! Good job. You made it to lead consultants. Woo! Good job. You hit sensational start one. Oh, give me the hug. Give me the high fives. All the energy, right? So a lot of us weren't around that for a really long time. And the person we looked in the mirror that's the person that was standing in our way, we thought. That was the person that, if they don't move out of the way, I'm never going to make it where I am, right? So she said, she started high-fiving people in her the mirror. Not people, herself. So she would get up in the morning. She'd look in the mirror. How you doing today, Mel? We're going to have a great day. Yeah! And she'd high-five herself in the mirror. And she goes, and it seems like the silliest thing. But the fact that she was high-fiving the person that has been in her way, the person that she didn't even like to look at in the mirror anymore, the person that could cheer her on because she's her biggest cheerleader, that it started making a difference in her life. So instead of in the mornings going to the bathroom or walking in there after you wake up and looking at the person in the mirror and then just going and doing your thing, she looked forward to looking at that person in the mirror. She looked forward to making that person proud in the mirror. She looked forward to knowing that that person was getting the things that they always desired and they weren't standing in her way. It was just a mindset swift shift. Isn't that so cool? I, I, I thought that that was so cool. So that is what I wanted to talk to you today about is I wanted you to do those activities of if you're feeling jealousy or if you, you know, have that negative talk. Because your brain is going to look at the things that you tell yourself. If you tell yourself you're not a good leader, then you're going to try every single thing to attract 
those thoughts to you of why you're not a good leader. See, I'm not a good leader because I forgot to do a coaching call. See, I'm not a good leader because that person said that they would be further if I would have shown up in their life. See, I'm not a good leader. You're not responsible for anybody's success. They're responsible for their success. They're responsible for that person that they look at in the mirror. Not you. You are only responsible for you. If you want to get from A to B, you're the one who has to do it. Your brain is kind of like mile markers on a road. If you're on a road and you're going to Denver, let's say, it says 400 miles before you get to Denver. Then all of a sudden you see 378, and then you might see 215, and then you see like 115, and then you see like 58. It is mile markers that are keeping you on track to get to your destination. That is what your brain will do for you. Your brain will look for things. If you're like, I need to sponsor new people, and I'm going to sponsor new people, and I am going to target moms. Let's just say that. Or I am going to target teachers because you really have to have somewhere to start. All of a sudden, if you're telling your brain you're making your opportunity packets, you're making your welcome packets for those people that are going to join your team and you're getting excited about it, your brain is going to start showing you the people that could be on your team. It's going to start catching those things that you didn't hear in the grocery store line of someone who lost their job or someone who needs extra income to pay for ballet classes. It's going to start catching those things that it never caught before. If you are telling yourself you're not enough, your brain's going to remind you every day that you're not enough. There's a system and it all has to do with your belief. Whatever you believe, that's going to be what your thoughts are. So if you don't feel like you're a good mom, then probably somebody told you you weren't a good mom. Or maybe you felt like you weren't a good mom. If you feel like you're not enough, maybe you had a bad childhood and you were told you wouldn't be enough. That maybe your brother was better than you or your sister. Or maybe you were in a marriage like me where you were told you'd be nothing. So therefore, the belief got in there very early. It said you're not enough. So your thoughts, every single time you fail at something or every single time that you do something and it doesn't work out, or every time you even think about doing something, like, you know what, I'm not enough anyway, so it ain't gonna work. And then what happens with thoughts or actions? So if you feel like you're not enough and you feel like you're not a good leader, your actions are you're not gonna show up like a good leader. And your result, you're gonna feel, your feelings are because of your thoughts. You're gonna feel less. You're gonna feel sad. You're gonna feel miserable. So your actions are gonna be that you're not gonna show up and your results are gonna be you're not gonna recruit, you're not gonna promote, you're not gonna be sustainable. And you probably quit Sensi, seriously. But if you shift your belief to, you know what? It's okay that someone told me I'm not enough. I am enough. I do have worth. I don't need the world to tell me what my worth is. I know my worth. I am worthy. I am enough. If you believe that, and I am a good leader, my thoughts are going to be like, today I'm going to do this kind of training and this is why because I've had results with this. I know it works. If they show up and they decide to turn their brain on like I turned my brain on, we're going to do this together. But I'm not responsible for their success. They can't tell me I'm not a good leader. I am a good leader. So your thoughts are going to keep you going. Your feelings, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel confident. You're going to feel like you can't wait to talk to the next person. You're going to book those coaching calls. You're going to call your, your customers with follow-up. Then your actions are gonna be that you're gonna show up in a way you never showed up before and your results are gonna be you're gonna promote, you're gonna go on those trips, you're gonna be able to listen to those heart's desires that are always yelling out to you. And magic starts to happen, right? So it's all about your belief. So you can't sit there and say, I don't deserve it. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I don't know where to start. Everybody else already has taken the success. There's no room for me at the table. Because if you sit there and you think those things, your brain's going to show you every single time why that's true. It's like, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. I mean, that's what it is. So going back to what I was talking about in the beginning, I know I'm, let's see what time it is. Oh, I'm okay. I think she said, I think she said an hour. I'm not going to go an hour, I don't think. I hope you guys are enjoying this because I, I'm so passionate about this. Um... Going back to what I was talking about, about that formula, is it doesn't matter how much you want it. It doesn't matter how much you dream about it. It doesn't matter how much you speak it if you don't move towards it. You have to move towards it. You have to retrain your brain to see the vision that you have for yourself. Know that you deserve that dream. 
There's no reason that I should be where I am and that you, and no one else could be where I am. There's plenty of room at the table for every single person. That's what we've talked about the campfire and always moving back and inviting people in. I don't deserve success more than anyone else. And they don't deserve success more than me. We are all the same. We all start out at zero in the beginning of the month, right? We all start out at certified. And we all have to grow our businesses. And we all have to believe in ourselves that our products make a difference, our company makes a difference, and that we make a difference, right? So I'm going to take you through one more activity and I promise I'm done, okay? And this is it. I want you to think about the real reason you joined Cincy. I'm not just saying, you know, to pay bills. I'm talking about the real reason. There was a fire. There was a spark. There was a hope inside you that made you push that button, right? Exactly. Stagnant water didn't go anyway. Where? So I'm going to take you through this thing, and I'm just going to give you an example. When I joined, I told you at the very, very, thank you, at the very, very beginning, I joined because it made me happy. I joined because it changed my mindset, and it reminded me of happy days. It was a happy pill that I took. That helped me show up in my life with three little toddlers and a, a nine-year-old or eight-year-old and this broken mindset that I was carrying around with me like luggage. It made me happy, right? And some people join for money and some people join for other reasons, but there's always a core value. Every single thing that you do is always come from either fear or love. Every single thing. If it's to have money, be like, well, why is that important? Because I want my kids to have everything. Well, why do you want them to have everything? Because I didn't have everything. Well, why didn't you have it? You see what I'm saying? There's always a why that's deeper, but you can take yourself too. But to really understand my vision and my purpose of every single time I wanted to quit, of all the times that I saw everybody getting the trips and maybe I wasn't going to get them, or of all the times that maybe they were getting paid at title and I might not get paid at title, or of all the times that they were getting it before I was, that I didn't feel like I was enough, I had to take myself through this exercise. So number one, what is it that we represent? What are our products? Our products are fragrances, right? Our products are fragrances. And you guys can answer this with me. So what problems do fragrances help us solve? Can people tell me? What problem do our Scentsy products help us solve? Because we're starting with the company. We're starting with the products. I'm going to see if anybody like, starts answering me here. It relaxes you. Okay? What else? Changes your mood. Exactly. It changes your mood. Okay. So, why is it important for people to be in a good mood? Why is it important for people to be in a good mood? Why is it important... For you to be in a good mood. Think about your family. As far as the family. Why is this important? Yes. It spreads to those around us. Right? Makes us happy. So for me, I'm a mom. Why is it important for me as a mom to be happy? Well, like you said, it spreads to our kids. Right? They can feel our energy whenever we're not feeling good gives us positive vibes. It makes us have a happy home, right? Okay. So who is it going to impact? Well, it's going to impact our family. It's going to impact our kids. When mom is happy or daddy's happy, it's going to impact our family, right? So why is it important then for me as a mom, you as a mom, or you as a, a person, why is it important for you to be joyful and present with your family? Why do you feel like that is important? Tell me that. Why do you feel like that's important for your kids to experience a joyful, happy, healthy mom? I'm waiting for you guys. Because I know the answer to my end, so they're joyful, right? So what is the most important thing in the world as a mom for our children? 
in the, in the world? What is it that we want to do for our kids more than anything in the world? What is it that we want to be able to do for our kids? Yes. So they know what to expect in their relationships. So they know how to be good stewards into the world. So that they know how to be kind. So they know how to find joy. Just like I was talking to Melanie the other day. What brings you joy? You got to always go back to what brings you joy. So, would you say that it's fair for me to say, with all the things we have talked about, just a company that has fragrance, that this would be a possibility that we could create in other people's lives? Would you say that's fair to say? And if you do believe that, just like I believe that, I believe that when people host with me, join me, um, refer me, have parties for me, that since he blesses their life somehow. But if you believe that, right? We're getting off of the money. We're getting off of the titles. We're getting off of the trips. We're getting off of all the reasons that maybe you've joined Cincy and, and listen to me. I mean, I'm coming from a mom standpoint. So if you don't have moms, you know, you have your fur babies or you have the people around you that you impact every single day. So if you really believe that that impact could happen, what could happen if you could help lots of moms and you could help a lot of people help them raise their children in that joyful environment of them being present and happy? Could you imagine what that looked like? Could you imagine the fact that that piece of wax, that scent triggers those memories of maybe their grandmother in the kitchen baking a, a pie or that scent reminded them of like their first love or whatever it is, the feelings that they experience, the way they'll show up in their family. Not only are you going to change their finances, but you can change their families as well. So when I say to people, you know, this is why I joined. It's also why I stay. Because for a long, long time, I thought my why was, in the beginning, I thought it was because of the da my daughter and the divorce and that I was going to have to give her a life that I didn't want her to feel the divorce, right? And then it went to taking her own trips and everything was all around Peyton. It was all around taking her to Disney because when I went to my first convention and Orville brought out that little figurine of going to Disney, I remember thinking, I'm going to take her. I don't have to take the other three because they have awesome dad, but I'm going to take her. And I remember her being my why. And for years was her why, taking her in the Caribbean cruise, making sure that I paid for um, anything that she wanted so she wouldn't feel the impact of being in a divorce. It was all about her. And then one day she called me and she said, Mom, I don't want to be your why anymore. I don't want you to sit up there and tell everybody on stage anymore that I'm your why. I'm an adult. I'm getting married. I'm not a victim anymore because I am through it. I've forgiven dad. I don't want to be your why anymore. And it crushed me. I was like, oh my gosh, what is my why? It can't be the other three kids. I love them dearly, but they didn't go through what she did. And then my friend reminded me, Shannon, when you joined, how did it make you feel? Made you feel happy, right? When you took Peyton to Disney, how did it make you feel? Made you feel happy. Made you feel worthy being a mom. Made you feel great. How did you feel when you took her on the Caribbean cruise? Happy. How do you feel when you talk to people about Cincy? Happy. How do you feel whenever other teammates come to you and tell you if you wouldn't have given them that opportunity, it would, they would never have changed their life to get out of the situation they were in or to be able to pay off that debt, or be able to stay home with their babies? How does that make you feel? Happy. Then why isn't it enough? That you stay in Cincy and your why is because it makes you happy. Because it helped me become the mom, the healthy, happy mom my kids deserved. It helped me be present with them. It helped me in my marriage to have a home smell good, even though if my house wasn't smelling good. It helped me. This opportunity that you can gift people can change their lives in so many ways than just their income, than just where they belong, than just the trips. It is so much deeper. But it all goes down to that belief. So I'm ending it here, and I want you to know that I want your dream to be something that propels you through those fears and drags you through those fears and gets you to where you want to go. I don't want you to go to bed haunted by something that you feel like you can't have. 
You can have anything you put your mind to. But first you got to change that mindset and know that you believe in yourself. Because the company believes in you. Melanie and all your directors believe in you. You got to believe in yourself. You do. That's it. I hope I didn't go too long, Melanie. But I just really am passionate about this subject. And I love you guys so much. And I'm very proud to be your blind SSD. You can reach out to me anytime that you want to. Um, and, you know, I just think Melanie is incredible for doing this for you guys. And I really hope this helped you. All right. Bye.